arms or branches this way and this way mm -hmm. along the way. But what vision does is it builds the straight road, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If God hasn't given you a vision for your ministry that you haven't reached yet, mm -hmm. you need to check yourself. Mm -hmm. Because God will always warn you and show you in advance what's coming. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is listen. Yes. And I know what Jerry was talking about. I think that helps us talk about but Vision will make your work fruitful as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Otherwise, you could be busy doing a lot of stuff and trying to rehash something old yes. and make it into something new, but it's not the vision mm -hmm. that... Maybe that might have been a vision years ago, but God moved you from those things and yes. brought you forward. He wanted to do something new. Unless you catch the vision, then you're doing a lot of effort for nothing. Right. right. Then there, there is fruitlessness then. Yes. For the yes. kingdom. Because it's not about you, it's about bearing kingdom right. bearing fruit for the kingdom of God. Yes. Not for anything. That's other. right. That's so right. Be fruitful, you need a vision. Yes. Daddy? Because you're busy in your own efforts. That's right. Works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I used to do? I'll be honest. I'll talk to myself. <laughs> I knew that I had a call that I didn't want to answer. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. Did not want to do it. You weren't going to make me do it? Because I was going to fill up my busy time mm -hmm. with all these other things. i would clean every toilet. I'll vacuum every rug. I'll sing every song. I'll cook every meal. I'll mow every blade of grass at the church as long as I don't have to answer the call into the ministry I have been called to. Mm -hmm. And if it seems like I don't have enough time to do it, then you're not going to make me. Mm -hmm. Then I met Jerry. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Wrong answer. <laughs> right? Right, Debbie? Right. right. And he said, you got the same amount of time as I do. Make time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Remember? Just smile. Okay, Dad. Yep. Yeah. You know what that reminds me of? When you get a phone call and you just silence it, then the phone call, call again, you silence it. They keep calling you to the point you have to pick it up and answer it. Yes. Yes. Can I, I got to point, I have to point something out here. Okay. Because God also, a couple of times has said to me, you need to say something. And I said, oh, no, no, no. Okay. So, we talk about ministry hurting. Mm -hmm. And when you're really in ministry, it actually hurts. You do things that you don't want to do, right? Mm -hmm. You have to rearrange your schedule to meet the needs of the people that mm -hmm. you have to minister to. That's true ministry. Yes. Right. But what you also have to understand is that doesn't mean that you own me. Okay? That doesn't mean that I come with a leash and that every time you need me, to come to your side that I'm going to be able to. Right. That's why there's more than one of us. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. If I can't be there, I'm going to say, call Dave, call Jerry. Right. Right? So don't get upset when somebody can't do what you want them to do in your time. Right. Because it's not always ministry you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes we know the difference. Well, no, all the time we know the difference. Okay, but if you're just calling because you don't have anything else to do, and you're looking for something to do, that's not ministry. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will be there for a need for you. So be careful that you understand the difference between ministry and. And, and, and carrying your leader around or leading your leader around on a leash. Right. Understand? Who are you talking about, Grace Lesson, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about not here. Oh. I'm talking about in general. This they happens. Yeah, they ain't leading that, around. And here. it happens a lot in other churches. Yeah. That happens all the time here because all the time I hear people telling me, well, I've, you know, we, I've talked to you, but I want to speak with Jerry. Yeah. And I want to speak with you, but they're getting all the answers they need here. But, you know, you can't just, uh, our job, too, is to do the ministry we're called to so that 
Jerry's not, uh, not free, is he? Yes. Yeah. He needs to be free to up with certain things. Right. That's why you had, that's why you had the gifts of, you know, they yes. gave given us. Yes. The from apostles, the evangelists, mm -hmm. and all these things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're not to be the, the forefront, but we're supposed to be at the forefront so the apostles or the one leaves the church be free up to do what they need to do. Right. Because if we actually uh, follow the commands of the people, nothing will ever get done. No. Mm -hmm. Now y'all going to understand this. And Jesus called the 70 and gave them power yes. and sent them out. Mm -hmm. yeah. He stayed there, but he sent the 70 out. Mm -hmm. You with me? Uh, Let me back it up Old Testament. If you say, that's his New Testament. No, Let me back it up Old Testament. Yeah. Moses gave his spirit unto 70 yes. to handle mm -hmm. the business. That's right. The so Jethro said, "You don't wear yourself out." That's right. That's Old Testament right. and New Testament. Yes. All the people want is a representative of Grace Message Church. Nine times out of out of ten, the people that have a problem with who they are talking to are Christians. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to pray for me. Mm -hmm. I want that person to pray yeah. for yes. me. Yes. Yeah. But as Paul says, who is Apollos, and who right. is Paul? Right. Right. So as long as you have a representative from Grace Message Church, they're speaking for all of us. That's right. That's if right. they're sent. Right. Yes. Now, if you're going out on your own, mm -hmm. you avenge, I mean, a uh, 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 avenge, 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 not an evangelist, a, 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 like a hula. Evangelist. Vagabond. No, no, evangelist. Forget it. <laughs> It'll come sooner or later. Yeah, oh, vigilante. Vigilante. Yes. Oh, yes. I was trying to. <laughs> but there's yes. a flip side to that because that's why it's so important that we all are moving forward and either walking in our ministry yes. or training to walk in our ministry. Right. Because if everybody is laying down on the job, it, the work still has to get done. Right. Yes. Right. Right? right. And so it falls back on the leaders yes. to get it done. Right. And so that's why it's so important. That's why a lot of times you'll see Jerry say, um, I want, I need to know what you're doing. Tell me how this works or this, because we have to know, because if something happens and you back away from it, it has to keep going to forward mm -hmm. yeah. and we have to know how to do it. Right. right. It's not setting you up to fail or being controlling. No. It's Bible. Okay. That's why, you know, it's so important, like you said, to be a believer, but you don't we have to be a mature believer to have your prayers heard, because Jesus is just talking to the disciples where yes. you hear, which, learn it young, that God is hearing your prayers, yes. because Jesus tied them, them in with him, he said, you pray, say it this way, say, our Father, so he's connected you with the same Father, the same, yes. you know, right. he's connected you in the family. Right. So, you know, a lot of times people want, well, the leaders of the church need to pray for me. But if there's an anointed one that's sitting right next to you, so you're judging, if one judges again, yes. then you miss the moment yes. rather than taking the moment. Yep. Yeah. And I've been guilty of that. I can remember Just times the past. Yeah. Why are you praying for me? I want the pastor to pray for me. Mm -hmm. I've been guilty of that. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I was, yeah. You you see you what we don't what we didn't understand we understand now is that anointing trickles down right right, yeah. right. right. as the oil on Aaron's beard poured on his head and trickled down, down his beard right mm -hmm. so the power that rests on Jerry trickles down from the, the anointing down. from the head down to the rest of us mm -hmm. we understand that right. now yeah, but, we didn't at first. but we didn't at first so I saw. The anointing that sat on the head, I want him to pray for me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Not understanding right. that the leadership team had that same anointing trickling down on them. Right. Yes? Right. Yeah. Yes. And so, in our pattern for prayer, we enter with what? Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and praise. How do we do that? By exalting and magnifying him. And then... Thanking him for what he's done. What God is the same yesterday, yesterday today, today, and forever. So you acknowledge him in all realms right there, right? Next thing that we do is what? 
just boards the things. We just did that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did. yeah. What yeah. was the next thing we do? We pray that this. Yeah, we already did that. Nope. We have to get the spiritual and physical food and find Ah. Food. Next thing we say is, Thy kingdom come. come. Jerry showed the flip side two realms. We pray for his word, yes. right? Yes. And we pray for his kingdom, which is only mm -hmm. here in spots right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Thy will. We pray the will mm -hmm. of the Father be done mm -hmm. in us and the world as it is in the mm -hmm. gospels Gospel. and in heaven or his kingdom. Right. Then we move into give us this day our daily, daily bread. And Cordy said what? Apply the blood. Apply the blood. Pray for spiritual and physical food. Physical and spiritual food. Verse 4. It mm -hmm. says, and forgive us our sins. It's confessing our faults. Back in Matthew 6, if you look at Matthew 6, right around verse 13, it gives us the same parallel, but it says, um, it uses the words, it, it uses the word um, indebted, I believe, and it's the word faults. Again, this lines up with what Jerry just taught about the difference between forgiveness and repentance. Right? Yes. Forgiveness is confessing your sin. Right? Mm -hmm. Do you know part of the reason when, when the disciples said to Jesus, but we've done miracles in your name, and we've cast out demons in your name, and he said, depart from me, you workers of inequity, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Part of the reason that he said that was because they never confessed their faults. Mm -hmm. And if you want more information on that, check the Food for Thought coming soon. <laughs> to a theater near you. <laughs> to a Facebook near you. <laughs> Confess your faults. Repent means to what? Change to change your mind. Confess means what? <laughs> to admit your error. Right? Mm -hmm. So, we come into this and then we say, you hear us say a lot, Forgive us for the things that we do that are not like mm -hmm. you. We say that a lot here. Mm -hmm. That's the next in the pattern of prayer. We are forgiven. Look at the rest of the next part of verses. <coughs> Excuse me. For we also forgive everyone <coughs> that is indebted to us. <coughs> the Bible says, if you have ought in your heart against your brother. Leave your offering and go to that person and make it right. Mm -hmm. If you want forgiveness in your life, you have to forgive. And Devin used to say this from the very beginning. And I always remember this. And that includes yourself. Mm -hmm. Because we can hold against ourselves that that unforgiveness, I can't believe I let that happen. And we beat ourselves up with it. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And so when you have that bitter, because really unforgiveness is a root of bitterness, is really what it is. Yeah. When you have that in your heart, you can't move forward. A few months back, we taught broken and bitter mm -hmm. or broken yeah. and, and better. Right? Right. Once you get to that point of forgiveness, that's when you can move forward yes. and more better. As a teacher at school, as a boss, I have people under me, I don't ask people to do things that I myself am not willing to do mm -hmm. or that I myself have not already had training in. Mm -hmm. If you're asking for forgiveness, but you refuse to forgive everybody else, why do you expect it? You should. Mm -mm. You shouldn't. We do. we do. Because we automatically go to, he, God is full of grace and mercy. Yes, he is. But the Bible says, 
the measure by which you judge, ye shall be judged. And the measure by which you meet somebody with mercy, you will receive mercy. Mm -hmm. So if you're not granting it, you're not going to get it. Okay. Amen? Amen? Amen. It continues with, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's the temptation are the trials, the tribulations, mm -hmm. the testings. Deliver us from those things. Now, if you jump down to verse 9, it says, And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given unto you. This is where you ask according to the Father's will. It's not the first thing that you do. We just went through five or six steps before you even get to yes. asking or making a petition or praying for what you need. Mm -hmm. I said this just the other day. Jerry still be praying. We're all like, Jerry, are you done yet? Because he was talking for so long, right? If you follow not the prayer that's supposed to be repeated, right. but the pattern, it's not going to take you five seconds to get there, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that your prayer has to be, you know, 30 minutes of long, drawn out, every exalting word that you can think of. No. Okay? But you have to follow the steps. Right. It's like when you put together a coffee table. You follow the instructions. Right. And if you skip an instruction like I do all the time because I don't have enough patience to read the directions, <coughs> you're going to put something on it and the whole thing is going to collapse. That's how this works. Order. You have to follow. What's that, Eddie? Order. 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 And it shall be open to you. Verse 10. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Mm -hmm. And it came yes. to pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. I have one thing to close with, and it's this. You don't pray to Jesus, mm -hmm. but you have to pray in the name of Jesus. It's John 14, 13. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself is talking to you. He says, ask of me in my name, and it shall be done. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting because, well, hold on. Um, Matthew 18, 35, write that down, and John 17, 15. Those are just references for you. Matthew 18.35 and John 17.15. It's funny because I I still hear this now. And now when I hear it, and it never affected me before, but now when I hear it, I'm like, and you hear it on TV, on teachings too. Dear Jesus. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think, I used to do that all the time. And it never, but now... It's funny what your ears get open to after yes. hearing and hearing and hearing and with all you're getting, getting yeah. understanding. Yeah. The people who aren't praying correctly and they don't get what they ask for, as James said, we started, because they ask of us. Yeah. 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 